In this video, I will deal with the Milman's theorem. So this is a theorem which is uh, used to uh, simplify the circuits which is having multiple voltage sources in parallel. That means if you are having number of voltage sources in parallel, then this type of circuits can be replaced by a single voltage source in series with the resistance. Instead of applying nodal analysis, mesh analysis or any other theorems which we have discussed so far, we can use this Milman's theorem because it will give a simple equivalent. Okay, It makes the calculations also easier. That's why we go for the Milman's theorem. Suppose we have a circuit like this. This is Rn, R3, R2, R1, this is E1, E2, E3, En. Okay, so this is what I was telling. Multiple voltage sources, they are in parallel. Okay, such type of circuits can be simplified using this Milvan's theorem. Instead of applying nodal analysis, like if you are considering V uh, outgoing current, simplifying that equations, that's not needed here. Or mesh analysis means considering each loop, solving the currents, that also is not required here. Just you will have to substitute uh, an equation, you have to find out the answer. For that, we will see the steps which are involved that to get the final result. Okay, so one thing you have to remember is Milman's theorem is okay applicable to both AC and DC circuits. So if it is involving impedances, capacitors, inductors, also we can apply this Milman's theorem. That means we can apply it to both AC and the DC circuits. And remember another thing: minimum two sources should be there. Minimum two sources should be there with one source only with one source okay you cannot apply the Milman's theorem so minimum two sources should be there here I'll consider a load resistor okay so using this Milman's theorem it is easier to find the load current that is passing through the load resistor okay we will see the steps which are involved in the simplification process so here what I will do is first I will convert this each voltage source to the current source. You know how to convert it to current source that is source transformation. What will be the value of the current that will be voltage divided by resistance. So here it is E1 divided by R1. Next you have the same resistance in parallel. You know in source transformation the value of the resistance does not change. So next source I am converting it into the current source. Here we are taking E2 divided by R2. And here we have resistance R2. Okay. And similarly we have E3 divided by R3. And again we have resistance R3. And so on it continues. Okay. Till Rn. And you will have a current source here. That is En divided by Rn. And lastly you will have a load resistor here. Okay, this is after applying the source transformation, converting voltage source to the current source. So now you can say that all the current sources are in the same direction that is pointing upwards. But this will not be the case always. You may have current like this, okay, current in downward, one in upward direction, one in downward direction, you may get that but depending upon the polarities of the voltage source. So you must be very careful by just seeing multiple sources in parallel just just don't uh, go and write the uh, direct equation you have to see which polarity which uh, means which voltage source has different polarities also you have to check for the polarities okay so that's an important point check for the polarities of the voltage sources otherwise you will arrive at the wrong answer okay so now what happens since all the current sources are in the same direction i will take the sum of the currents for the i equivalent Okay, equivalent. Okay, so I equivalent that will be equal to E1 by R1 plus E2 by R2 and so on till En by Rn. 
okay so next what will be your r equivalent how will you find the r equivalent that is by deactivating the sources so in the original circuit where you had multiple sources how we will find the resistance by deactivating the voltage source that means you are going to make the voltage zero that means you will short the voltage sources then you will get the r equivalent that is all the resistances will be parallel so in that case you know 1 by r equivalent is equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 and so on till 1 by rn so instead of this we can also see the conductance g equivalent is equal to g1 plus g2 plus g3 and so on till gn where g is nothing but it is a reciprocal of the resistance so this also we can consider instead of 1 by r equivalent okay so now we got to know the value of the current and we know got to know the value of the r equivalent also so now what we can do is i will replace it with the single current source i'll replace it with the single current source i equivalent and r equivalent and here we have rl so now keeping rl as it is i can once again convert this current source to the voltage source so here we are going to get v equivalent that is nothing but i equivalent into r equivalent r equivalent comes here that is in series and here we have a load resistor now using this it is easier to find the load current it is easier to find the load current right so now what will be the value of i v equivalent and r equivalent here so v equivalent or e equivalent that is a voltage that is i equivalent here e1 by r1 plus e2 by r2 so on till en by rn what will be r equivalent r equivalent means it is reciprocal of this right 1 divided by 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 so on till 1 by rn r equivalent is reciprocal of this right so i have taken 1 divided by this thing so you can write e equivalent is equal to e1 by r1 plus e2 by r2 and so on till en by rn divided by 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 so on till 1 by rn so this is the value of equivalent it's very easy to remember right current that is e1 by r1 so on you can write take out the e values just write 1 by r1 1 by r2 till 1 by rn it is a very easy formula that you can remember here in minimum yeah. this r equivalent once again it will be the parallel resistance that value you know so this is what you have to remember okay that is in the milman's theorem and i told you keep the polarities in mind okay don't alter the polarities now you may get the circuits like this you may get a problem involving the voltage sources and current sources like this okay so this is the case 2 in this case 2 you will see this source okay what you will do is directly you will have e1 e2 e3 r3 r2 and r1 what you will do okay you will see okay our voltage sources are in parallel now i will apply the milman's theorem so what i will do e1 by r1 plus e2 by r2 plus e3 by r3 uh, divided by 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 you will write this for e equivalent you will find the r equivalent and you will write down the uh, final value but this will fetch you wrong answer why why because you can see the polarity of this voltage source is opposite that means here i have to take minus e1 by r1 minus e2 by r2 it does not make any changes in the resistance part obviously but here in the sign of e2 that will be changed sign of e2 will be changed because of the opposite polarity suppose even if this was like this then here this is also minus okay so take care of this take care of this now i will take case 3 in case 3 you may find some circuits like this
ओके सो नाउ यू विल थिंक ओ माई गॉड वॉट हैपन वी हैव टू सोर्सेज एज इट इज ओके बट हियर टू अप्लाई मेलमंस थियरम आई डोंट हैव वोल्टेज सोर्स आई हैव ओनली रेजिस्टर बट हियर देर इज अ लोड रेजिस्टर नाउ वॉट टू डू शुड आई अप्लाई नोडल एनालिसिस शुड आई अप्लाई द मिश एनालिसिस नाउ आई एम कन्फ्यूज यू विल बी थिंकिंग लाइक दिस बट दिस इज ऑल्सो वेरी सिंपल ओके इन दिस केस वॉट यू हैव टू डू इज यू कैन हैव अ वोल्टेज सोर्स बट इट इज ऑफ जीरो वोल्ट zero volt e3 is equal to zero volt that is shorted that's why you have no voltage source in the actual circuit so in this case what you can write e1 by r1 plus e2 by r2 and since e3 is equal to zero leave that as it is and take the summation of this this will give you equivalent i have not taken e3 part because it is zero but we can apply the milman's theorem to such circuits also okay to such circuits also considering this as zero volt that is the case 3 now we will have case 4 where we will be having combination of the current source and the voltage source okay this is case 4 combination of voltage and the current source so suppose we have current i1 here we have r1 here we have e1 here we have r2 here we have e2 and once again we have i2 okay then we have rl so now you will be thinking if we didn't have this current source we could have applied milman's theorem because it involves two sources here we can apply it but no in this case also you can apply milvan's theorem okay so that will be the case here you can write e1 by r1 as it is e2 by r2 as it is as you were writing in the milvan's theorem and remember these are the currents this is also the value of current right this is also value of current voltage divided by resistance here you had 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 this is resistance keep that as it is that will not change but here since it is a current you can also write i1 plus i2 i1 plus i2 because it is a value of current suppose if this was in the downward direction you can write this as minus i2 okay everything depends upon the direction of the current sources polarities of the voltage sources this signs in the equation okay so in this case also if it is having the current sources you can apply the milman's theorem just remember the final expression would look like this summation of e divided by r plus summation of i that is divided by r equivalent sorry not r equivalent it is into r equivalent that is nothing but here 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 and so on something you will whatever you are having okay so this one will be your expression this is current into r that gives you voltage so the here since uh, r equivalent it will be reciprocal of this i am taking it below okay so just remember if you are having current sources you will have this additional term summation of i so in this case also you can apply the milman's theorem okay yes now we will see the disadvantage of this milman's theorem among independent sources if there are dependent sources we cannot apply milman's theorem cannot apply second one if there are impedances among the independent okay if there are impedances between the independent sources or the among the independent sources then also we cannot apply the milman's theorem suppose consider this one this is the circuit that i know so in this case can i apply milman's theorem no i can't apply because you can see there are these two resistors in between these two parallel sources okay if suppose if there was resistor here and there was no resistor here we could have applied by simplifying these two resistances that is in series but here we have these resistors 
okay because of this we cannot apply the milvan's theorem so if you have impedances like this among the independent sources then we cannot apply milvan's theorem and if there are uh, dependent sources also we cannot apply milvan's theorem okay so this are uh, these are the disadvantage of Mil milvan's theorem and what is the advantage is it is very easy because it does not involve solving simultaneous equations okay just you know the value e1 okay what is the formula for equivalent and r equivalent just substitute that okay so it does not involve simultaneous equations or and all so milman's theorem is very easy to apply but the disadvantages are this only it should not have independent uh, impedances among the independent sources it should not have the dependent sources also among the independent sources okay so this is all about the milman's theorem uh, we, we also will see uh, the dual of milman's theorem okay now only we will see dual of milman's theorem since the milman's theorem is applicable to the voltage sources which are in parallel the dual of milman's theorem we can apply to the current sources which are in series okay so if you are having current source it will have impedances or the resistances internal resistance in parallel to it again in series i'll take another current source okay it has resistance here it is again another one okay i will take three sources now which is in series this is r1 i1 r2 i2 r3 i3 this is rl in this case to find out the equations we will first convert this current source to voltage source you know since this is internally from negative to positive i will take the voltage source like this that is i1 r1 and uh, for source transformation the value of the resistance does not change here it is i2 r2 and here it is r2 here it is uh, i3 r3 once again you have to see the direction of the current sources if it is somewhere like this then it will be reversed polarity will be reversed okay this is r3 and then here you have the resistance rl okay so now we will find out the equivalent resist equivalent voltage source so equivalent voltage source that will be equal to summation of all these three things okay so here we will have minus plus what will be this value i1 r1 plus i2 r2 plus i3 r3 and here equivalent resistance will be summation of these three because these three are in series the current is same so r1 plus r2 plus r3 okay so now what we will do is we will convert this to current source how we will convert this you know this is the direction internally from negative to positive what will be the value it will be divided by this so i1 r1 plus i2 r2 plus i3 r3 divided by r1 plus r2 plus r3 then you have r equivalent here that is r1 plus r2 plus r3 and here we have rl okay there we saw equivalent that is e1 by r1 plus e2 by r2 plus e3 by r3 divided by 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 here you can see i1 r1 it was divided here it is voltage okay i1 r1 i2 r2 i3 r3 here we have r1 plus r2 plus r3 so this is the dual of the milman's theorem so it can be applied to n number of current sources in series also and here also we have different cases you can have this also the direction of the current sources can be changed okay so this is all about the dual of milman's theorem just remember the expression this is for e equivalent this is for i equivalent this is dual of milman's theorem okay